Hey guys, and welcome back to another Kibi tutorial. So in today's video, I've actually developed a, um, a pretty like decent sized GUI that has three different pages. Essentially what it is, it's a login form, but it actually saves your login information. So you can create an account on one page, you can log in on the other page, and then once you're logged in, you're brought to a main window, which displays some information to you. Now, your logins are saved, so they're saved in a text file. I know it's not the most secure way to save it, but essentially that means that, say you close the app and you rerun it, if you'd already created an account, your account still exists and your information is still saved. So I just want to show you guys, and the reason I did this is because a lot of you were asking me um, to create like a large scale GUI. So this is kind of something I did, uh, didn't take me very long, maybe about half an hour or 40 minutes. And this uses all of the different things that I've showed you. There's a few other small things that I've added that I didn't talk about, but I'm going to be releasing all of this code on techwithtim.net. So you guys can have a look through here as a great sample application to kind of mess a look through. It's pretty clean in terms of the way I coded it. Um, I didn't comment anything, but I'm sure you guys will be able to figure it out. And I'm going to run you through the code afterwards in case you want to know exactly how this works. So let's just run the program and just kind of get a feel of exactly what this is. So first of all, it's fully resizable. You can see obviously it's not ideal when you go full screen, but if I, I don't know, pull it out a little bit, um, then it resizes fairly well to the actual screen size. So I'm just going to leave it like this for now. Uh, so it brings you to a login page and essentially you can log in or you can create an account. So if we click create an account, it transitions us over. We have a create account, name, email, password. If you already have an account, you can log in and you can see how that works. Now, if I try to log in, obviously I haven't put anything in here. You can see that this gives me an invalid form, nice pop-up window, invalid username or password. Um, and just to be clear here, I didn't try to go crazy on the cosmetics. I could have changed some colors, messed around with that, but I wanted to get the functionality down first. Now, um, let's, what we're going to do is I don't have an account created yet, so let's create an account. So the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to say my name is Tim. My email is Tim at uh, gmail.com. Not my actual email, but anyways. Password, let's say 1234, and let's click Submit. Okay, so we submit, so it brings us over to the login page, so now we can log into our account. So let's say uh, email is tim at gmail.com, and the password, let's just try 123. Now if I try to log in, you can see we get invalid login, invalid username or password. So if I add that 4 there, uh, then it allows me to log in, and you can see that we come here to this page where it gives me my account name, my email, and the date that it was created on. And the only thing I have here is this information, but you can see what you'd be able to do with this, um, and you guys can add more stuff to it. Again, it didn't take me very long to create this. Now, obviously, I can log out, say I don't want someone to see my information, so I log out. Brings me back to the login page, which is now empty. Um, I can go back to create another account and whatnot. So let's just say if I close this application uh, and I run it again, what I can do is I can now, obviously, I can try to type in that same account and it will let me log in. So tim at gmail.com, one, two, three, four, log in, and you can see that is indeed working. Now, obviously, if I tried to do a different account like tim and like three, four, five, um, invalid username or password, uh, and there you are. So that is essentially the GUI that I created. I'm going to walk you through how I did this uh, very slowly kind of through all the code right now. So essentially I have this um, users.txt file which just saves all of the users and um, their passwords and whatnot and you can see that it just separates things by semicolons, pretty straightforward, it just adds a new line for each user. Now that's kind of my database per se. So what I'm working with here is two main classes. I have this database class, which essentially is responsible for any operations involving this text file, which means getting information and setting information. And I do this in actually a very efficient way using something called a dictionary. So what happens is when you initially run the program, it loads up my database first, uh, brings all of the entries into what's known as a dictionary, and then that dictionary um, stores usernames as keys and all the values like password, name and created on as values for that key. So that way when we want to look up information it happens uh, in O of n time or O of n, O of one time, so like constant time as opposed to every time rereading through this uh, thing. And you guys will see that when you look through the code. And again, this will be up on my website, techwithtim.net. Okay, so essentially let's go to actually the KV file for a second. You can see um, I didn't go crazy on all the cosmetics, but I have two or three main windows. So I have create account, I have login window and I have main window. Now these all inherit from a screen and then I have a screen manager that I'm using which is just window manager and just a blank class and it's just responsible for moving the things. You can see I got two functions here. You guys should be familiar with this invalid form, invalid login, and these just pop up a pop up window whenever um you know you do something wrong or whatnot. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm loading in my KV file with just like a loader file. 
I'm setting up a new instance of database, which we'll talk about in a second. And then what I'm doing actually here is uh, it's a bit different, but this is just so I can change screens from within my actual uh, code without having to do it from the KB file, which I'll talk about as well in a, in a bit. So when I do something like sm.current, this is the same as changing the current window within the KB file, um, but I'm just changing it from code. So that way I can check before I go to the next window and make sure that like they had an invalid login, for example, before moving to the main window where it had the information, right? Okay, so that's how that works essentially. Um, also, what I do is I create a new instance of SM uh, or a window manager equal to SM and that's what I'm returning in my build app and you guys if you read through this You should be able to understand it Now let's just talk about our main classes. Let's talk about login window first. So essentially uh, login window Maybe we'll go to the KB file. Okay, so let's go KB file for login window you can see we give it a name of login just so we can reference that uh, it has two object properties email and password so we can reference those values uh, and make sure they're correct obviously Float layout and inside the float layout we have an email, text input email, label, text input password. Um, and then we're having two buttons and obviously one of those buttons says uh, log in and one of those buttons says don't have an account, create one. And I kind of just dynamically place them. Again, you guys should know how to do all this. To change the transitions, I talked about this again, uh, we do just equals up. And for both these buttons, all I'm doing is simply calling a function that's stored or a method that's stored within the class that they belong to. Okay, so let's go to main window quickly. Um, so main window, three properties. N just stands for name. I just couldn't name it name because that's a property of main window already. Uh, again, float layout, we just have the labels. And then we have uh, the button, which is going to call, uh, what does it do? Oh, no, if you use log out, it just automatically brings you back. So I just changed the current from here. Okay, so I think we have, what is it, two more classes to talk about? Yeah, so, uh, or one more. Create account window. So this one's a bit larger. Um, you can see we have these different properties again, float layouts. And again, I'm not going to go through all this because you guys know how that works essentially. But you can see that when I call the button, I'm calling root.login. And that's going to trigger a function or a method, sorry, from within this class. And it's going to check things before possibly moving us to the next window. Okay, so that's it for the KV file. Uh, so let's talk about this login class. So I have this login button, uh, this create button. And this reset now what reset is going to do is it's going to reset both of email and password text fields and that's again one of the reasons i have them as an object property so i can reset them so obviously before we move to another page we'd like to reset that form so when we go back to it um it's not uh it's not filled in still right so now login button what this is going to do is it's going to call a database method called validate and essentially what that does is it's going to just validate the email against the password uh, and i'll show you how that works in a second and then we have main window dot current equals self dot email dot text. So say that this is true. This valid validation is correct. The password is correct. Then that means we're going to, um, what do you call it? Go to the next window. Uh, so actually, sorry, that's not what that does, but this is what this does go to the next window. This, what it's doing is actually setting the current user with inside this main window screen. Um, so that that way we can actually display the information for that current user by getting it from the database, which is db dot get user. Uh, log out again all this does is just move you to the login screen uh, I don't think I even need that anymore to be honest but anyways okay so back into the login sorry I got distracted create button all this is doing is obviously resetting the form and then moving us to the create page it doesn't we don't have to validate anything before we move to that page right so that's login window pretty straightforward um, this one create account window a bit more advanced but nothing crazy all this is doing essentially in this submit method here is what's called when you press that submit button is it's just checking to make sure all of our forms are valid so they're not empty and that our email is like somewhat validated just that it has an at sign and it has a period like at least one um, because you need that dot com or whatever right we're also just checking to make sure the password is not equal to blank if you want to do some more checks on the password for example make sure that it didn't have a invalid character i don't know whatever you want to do make sure it's length five has a capital letter you can do that in here as well and essentially if all this is correct i'm going to add this user to the database I'm going to reset the field and I'm going to change my window to the login page where then we can handle the logging in. Now, if for some reason any of these are not correct, I can do invalid form. Now, the reason I have these twice instead of just adding the statement in this if up here is in case you want to do some more checks on password and call a different um, pop up window, like be like you need to type six characters for your password instead of just saying it's an invalid form. You know what I mean? Uh, okay, so login, what this is doing again, we're resetting all the things which are object properties up here. And then we are simply changing the page to the login page. And I think that's almost it. Now let's go to database, talk about that. And that should be almost done. 
So database import date times because we want the date when we're saving it like this. Okay. Uh, but essentially database, all this is doing is responsible for loading up this users.txt file and saving things to it. So we start off with file name. This is the initializer. So we need this just to know what file we're going to be working with because this can work with multiple databases. Uh, we're going to do load. This is the first method. Obviously load. What this is going to do is load all of our data into a dictionary, which is going to be stored in self.users up here. And it's going to make it really quick to be able to look through information. So that's why I did that for an efficiency standpoint. Um, so we're going to go for line and file, just, you know, get email, password, name, just splitting the line up by semicolon and just add a key in our dictionary, which is the email. And it's going to have that information like I was talking about. I'm going to make sure we close that file once we open it up, um, just so we're making sure we save everything. And yeah, next method, get user really easy. We're just going to first check to make sure that email key is actually in self dot users. Uh, if that key exists, we'll return that. Otherwise, we're going to return negative one, representing the fact that we did not find that key. Okay, adding users again, pretty straightforward. All we're going to do is just first of all, um, check to make sure this email and I'm just stripping it to get rid of any trailing or leading white spaces is not inside of the self dot users and self dot users obviously is, no, have already been loaded up by the time we're calling add user. So we'll be able to check to make sure we're not creating a duplicate account. Now if that's if this uh, information is correct, then what we're going to do is we're going to do we're going to add a key to our what do you call it dictionary, which is going to be that email and we're going to have the password name and database um, dot get date. Sorry, that's a method I'll talk about in a second. We're going to save, which I'll talk about again later, return one representing that this was successful. Uh, and then otherwise, we'll just say email already exists and we'll just do negative one. OK, now validate. So what validate is going to do is really straightforward. We're just going to get the current user email. Um, Oh, we're going to make sure, first of all, the current user it exists. So when we get the user, we don't get a value of negative one, meaning it exists. That means we can try to now grab the user's email. So it was a self dot users, the key email zero, which sorry is actually going to represent the password. We're going to check to make sure it's equal to the password it was passed. If it is, we'll return that we will turn true. Um, otherwise, it's going to return false, right? Because we're just returning this condition. Okay, save pretty straightforward. All we're doing is just based on every uh, database entry. So everything in our self users dictionary, we're just going to write that into our text file accordingly, so that it looks like nice and neat like this. Uh, that's what this line does here. And then get date very straightforward. We're just getting the current date. Now that essentially is this GUI. I'll open it up once again, just to give you a reminder, this took me like 3040 minutes to make. So imagine what you guys can make if you spent like a few days doing this or maybe a week. I uh, created some pretty cool uh, graphical user interfaces and it's really easy and nice. And hopefully uh, in the next videos, we're going to go through how we can package this up for Android and iOS. Now, no promises because I'm still trying to mess with it myself. I think I figured out iOS, but I don't know how to do Android right now. So once I figure that out, I'll release that to you guys. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, make sure you guys stay tuned. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel for more content. And if you like this video in this tutorial series, please make sure to uh, let me know by leaving a like and give me some feedback in the comments.